<laughs> Let's get straight into it with The Telegraph. And Andrew Neil has attacked his former employer, GB News. Ironically, his complaint is about impartiality, Paul. Uh, See the irony? Uh, yes. Thank you. Uh, politicians, politicians should not be allowed to present political news programmes as they do on GB News, according to Andrew Neil, the channel's former chairman. So we should, first of all, thank Andrew for forming, help forming the channel uh, and yep. maybe thank him for leaving. I'll leave, that with, uh, <laughs> I'll leave that with everybody else. You Help. giveth and you taketh away, Paul. Exactly. That's hard. So, so what, what, quite the dilemma. Mm. Quite the dilemma, really, because I'm sure there are Ofcom rules. I, try to, I mean, the thing about Ofcom rules is you can change them. They were changed throughout the pandemic, you see, so that, they, so that we could have um, all sorts of things done and, and broadcast to us and told to us about the COVID pandemic. So it's not as if these rules aren't flexible. They are on the whole, pretty much leaving GB News alone. And I think that should be, that, 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 that should be a, a valid point to start with. But, however, you know, P GB News is punk. I can't think of another word that describes it better. GB News is punk. It's a bit like Millwall, right? People don't like us, but we don't care. Right. The idea is yeah. that the, we are giving voices to people that actually quite a few people would like to hear from. Yeah but a very small, loud minority don't want to hear from. Yeah, and I should say, loads of people love us across the country, but a small sort of media elite don't like us. That's why we're different from Millwall. I should point that out. But good point. And I, this is quite strange, actually, Lewis, because a few things here, and people say I mention Ofcom too much, but unfortunately this story is about Ofcom. So firstly, he's, Andrew Neil's saying we don't need politicians taking these jobs. But Michael Portillo was on his show this week for years and years and was excellent, and he's now on GB News. Another couple of things, Farage and Mogg are doing incredibly... Farage just won an award, the Trick Award, for Best News Presenter, so they're actually smashing it. And then he says they seem to be all conservative, but would a Labour MP do it? I'm sure we would have them if they would. And then lastly, he says, I'm just surprised that what Ofcom allows the channel to get away with, and there he means you, Lewis, but that's, that's, the, one, <laughs> that's, the, that's the one thing. Sorry to throw it away. What do you think? I, think? I think you're right. It's like, it's like, well, first of all, all journalists are failed politicians. And they're failed, most of them are failed before they even start being politicians. It's like a, a politician just is sort of delayed in getting it. And, and, and what they're saying is, they're saying is, uh, if there was a channel where there were failed labor politicians, they would not complain. Why can't we have failed Tory politicians. Failed this time. I mean, you know, yeah. Sir well, Jacob rees has just been made a, a knight. I mean, is he, is he, or whatever it is. But at the, end of the day, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, whose business is it anyway? If people, if it's known that, that someone is a, uh, is a, is a politician and they're, it, they're, it's, it's recorded that they're politicians, if, they, if we want to have them on or they want to have them on, that's fine. If people want to watch them. That's fine. Why should we have the government telling us? But, yeah, there's but no... Does, does he have a point about when it's a, a politician, a conservative politician, interviewing a conservative minister in some cases? Is that a problem with impartiality, Paul? Yeah, there's, there, there, there almost... Uh, it could be argued there almost certainly is. It's, you know, that where is where would be the partiality? They're not that all Tory MPs agree with Tory MPs. No. The, the point I would make, it just echoes actually what Lewis was saying, is that there is there, there's no smoke and mirrors here. They know that... Uh, let's, yeah, let's call it as it is. Rhys Mogg, um, we know that he's a Tory MP. That's, that's not a secret. And it would be weird if his views weren't uh, conservative-leaning. That would be odd. Mm -hmm. So that's not a secret either. And he's talking about the things that matter to him. So none of those things are a secret either. So yeah. there, there isn't as if anybody's trying to, you know, I secretly you mean. change the views. No, and on the, on, on the impartiality question, as if we didn't all know Emily Maitlis's views for years well, on Newsnet. Exactly. Yeah. It was so obvious what her views were. Then Every... she quit, and it became even more clear. We, yeah. She knew. She said, thought what we always knew she did. Because impartiality is impossible. Yes. For they're impossible for journalists to be impartial. It's possible for a, a, a TV station to be impartial, and and it's sort of a. That's the problem. With the, the problem is the BBC is the state broadcaster. They're the state propaganda network. They're pretending like they're not that they that they are impartial. This whole concept of balance is ridiculous. Is that? Yeah, I see what you mean. I, I kind of agree, which was have the American system. Everyone just says what they want. It's clear that it's opinion. Anyway, you're in luck, Lewis, because he also says the BBC doesn't have the money to do much anymore and is in is in trouble. So he, the only thing I'll say to just end is that um, I don't agree with Andrew Neil, but if a Tory politician takes my job, I might change my mind. <laughs>